<laughs> Robin. Hanging back in the him. cave with the mud people. <laughs> <laughs> back yeah. in the mountains hanging out with the mountain chicks and their 70s Earth Mama muffs in the hot springs. <laughs> I forgot we were talking about that yesterday. That's after we, uh, we got off the air. We were yapping about that. Things we were doing when we were uh, off and... What the hell was that? It was, uh, I was bringing up a trip to Colorado, and we went to this mud cave. God, we completely ran out of things oh, to do, didn't we? I know why, because uh, I think uh, Jim was talking about how uh, he was going to try that yoga. Oh, oh you're going to try Pikmin yoga, yes. Really? Yes. Now, where did you hear about this? My friend Sue told me. Ooh. I've heard it before. It's just that I want to do yoga because it's good for you. And Opie said that Elo has done this. Yeah, Elo told me uh, in my neighborhood they had this yoga class where they keep the room at, I don't know, some ridiculous temperature, like 120 degrees. I mean, just outrageously hot. And the women uh, do their yoga with barely any clothes on because it's so hot. And he goes, look, man, I didn't go for the freaking yoga. I went to check out the you know, the, the pieces of asses all around me. <laughs> Obviously, he he didn't go for the yoga. <laughs> hey, what do you think they're thinking looking at him <laughs> no doubt oh man. that guy over there with the misshapen head just passing out after three minutes <laughs> oh, God. so he told me i should check out this yoga place in my uh my hood and then Your hood and then jimmy after the show yesterday was talking about how he he was going to go try it as well yeah at another location i don't know whatever i need to have you somewhere yeah so then uh if, if you ever call the upper west side of manhattan the hood again <laughs> yeah. jesus christ yeah the hood <laughs> so uh we're talking about the the hot yoga and stuff and then I, it reminded me of of just uh i don't know how we i mm. i took this leap but i was in uh seattle and i was in a, a rainforest with oh. uh our old pal john o'brien at least there's no people there, right? And there were a couple girls involved, Anthony, because I'm not going down the Java Log Road again. And we're walking up into this area where there's uh, natural springs, hot springs, mm -hmm. and where basically uh, the water is just, I mean, just boiling hot coming up from, uh, you know, up from the ground. Big forest with petrified Java Logs all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and someone could probably explain why this is. I don't really care. But basically what the locals do is they, they build these uh, natural pools with rocks and mud. So then the water collects in these pools. Mm -hmm. and, then the, um, and then the people, you know, pretty much uh, lay around in these things naked. People see it as some type of healing thing, some type of th thing that's beneficial to health. Because it's right out of the earth, and especially Seattle, you're just going to get a bunch of these hippie-type mentality people that just think that bathing in this bubbling water from, from deep within the earth is, is going to help you out in well, some way. Well, it was kind of cool because there was a lot of mountain girls with 70s earth mom oh, moms, oh. completely nude. Great. So John and I look at each other like, what the hell, let's give it a shot. I I, I didn't get, I wasn't brave enough to go nude. I, I kept my little... uh. My little, uh, my little uh, underpants on. Underpants. You went in on your in your underpants. Underpants, which made me look faggier because everyone else was naked. But I'm like, you know what? Nah, I'm just not feeling it. So. Wow. Uh, but you yeah. are really insecure about your schlong. <laughs> not really. Well, you're you're not willing to, you know, expose it anytime. Anytime the the opportunity has come up to expose it, you always uh, back out. I don't know, cause uh, I think I think when you know, like John O'Brien's girlfriend was there. Oh, a little weird. My girlfriend at the time, which, which yeah, is, that is weird. Which is fine, but I think I think it's easier to get naked in front of people you don't really know, strangers that you'll never see and again. Maybe your girlfriend, but you know, if you're with your friends and their girls are there, and mm -hmm. it, you already know the dude, which makes it weird, and then his girlfriend's there. I, I yeah, and you're that right. Image will never go away. You're right. I that's the reason. Yeah. That's definitely the reason. No, you should have talked to her and kept leaning in so your helmet was uncomfortably close to her hand, <laughs> like whispering to her. <laughs> kind of brushing against her hand. <laughs> did uh, did your friend's uh, girlfriend get naked? John O'Brien? No, they didn't want to go in. No? Which made it, you know, a little strange, too. So they're kind of... They're kind of hanging outside the pool, just sitting on a rock as we're like frolicking with the mountain women. Yeah. Checking them out and starting conversations with them and making them laugh so their big mountain jugs go up and down mountain a little bit. Mountain jugs. <laughs> were, they, were they like really hippies, though? Were they, oh, yeah, man. Like they talking had... about no. nothing. Dude, no joke. 70s Earth Mama Muffs. Like, and this was only like a year, two years ago, whatever it was. Wow. You know, and uh, hairy armpits, all that fun stuff. So. And it, was it warm out or was it? kind of cold out and you get it, it was a lot uh, of people like doing that when it's really cold no, out. it wasn't cold through. it was it was like a spring day 
Yeah. You know, it was probably 70. That's not bad then. It was cool though. And, and, and the whole, like this whole mountainside is just a, a ton of them. Mm. And people spend all day just going to different ones, socializing, checking it out. Some are like, some are like really small pools where like little, you know, the couples go and really get Have it on. sex? Yeah, because Ugh. they're kind of hidden in, in like the, the woods and stuff. And then there's, uh, uh, it's like egg drop soup. And then there's much larger ones that it's bubbling away <laughs> are as big as this room, at least, at least. Yeah. And the water's, you know, anywhere. Some of them are only a few inches, you know, high, and others are a couple feet high with mm. the hot water coming through. It's pretty neat. So then I, I mentioned that, and then you were talking about like mud people or something oh. in a cave in Arizona. No, it's Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Okay. Yeah. I went to Colorado, and there, uh, there was this. It's it's like a cave. There's this place, and people go there. It's like they, they know where this is, and it's a big thing, and there's a, there's a few of them around in, in Colorado. It's a big cave uh, with hot springs coming up from the floor in some parts, like really hot, bubbling, boiling water, and it just makes steam in this place, so it is sweltering. It's just stifling heat and steam, and people go in there. You know, you get to go into a locker room, and you change into like this robe thing, but you and, ha it's an actual locker room? Yeah, yeah, outside the cave. You walk into this place, it's like a storefront on the side of a mountain. And you walk in, you, they also do, you know, nails and other things, facials, I guess. And uh, you walk down, you go to the locker room, they have a solarium. If you want to lay down in a room with plants and stuff, real hippie crap. And, uh, and then you, you walk down further, and you walk down these stairs, and you go into these caves... And there's mud kind of dripping because there's water dripping everywhere. This natural water is filtering through this mountain. Well, isn't water natural? Well, yeah, but it's <laughs> it's not like piped in from the city or something. It's you know, it's natural water. It's really, it's just bubbling up from the earth. Very natural. <laughs> and, and, and when it comes through the cracks in this mountain, uh, mud comes out. All kinds of this sulfur and and. Just all kinds of minerals. Oh, yes. I forgot to mention that really fast. Yeah. The, 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 I'm sorry. The, when you said sulfur, just yeah. with my story, the, the smell of sulfur was yeah. absolutely horrific. Really bad. Really bad. So so w what comes oozing out of these cave walls is this mud that's full of all these different minerals and stuff. So people grab handfuls of this mud and rub it all over themselves and kind of sit there in this sweltering heat. And I'm like... All right, you know, I'll try it. What the hell? Go in there and Did you keep a... your underpants on. Yeah, yeah. I, I I had some kind of shorts on. I can't remember if they like supplied some kind of ridiculous paper shorts. Or no, you got to go with swim trunks or a bathing suit or something. I guess some people go naked, but it's some because it's dark in there and, and there's all these little corners, nooks and crannies that you're walking around and it's kind of dark. Can't find your way around. You walk in there, and I guess somebody could be naked, just sitting there covered in mud. And uh, I, after like five minutes, I couldn't take it. First of all, the heat was just ridiculous, and then the smell in this place. I guess because of the sulfur and minerals oozing out of the walls, and just sweaty hippie people that are sitting there. It smelt like just feet and armpits. Just nasty, nasty. Did you spread the mud all over your face? I didn't do any mud. No. Why? No mud. I didn't. Why would I? I didn't want mud. So what? You just sit there on the side and watch I everyone else have, I have all their the, fun? I sat in the <laughs> steam for a while, and I was like, oh, shit, this sucks. <laughs> and I'm just miserable the whole time. Like, this stinks. And I just, I was like, ah, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah, I'm we were there with like my girlfriend and her family and stuff, so. I was like, I gotta go. I'm out. So I left, walked out. Just hippies. It's it's a hippie thing, and I'm the furthest thing from a goddamn hippie. And what's the mud supposed to do? It's some, supposed to have a, again that whole natural healing thing. Oh, there are claims. You know, you walk in and there's uh, pamphlets, and you read it. And this place has been been open since like the 1800s. People would go there to rub this mud on themselves, and uh, it's supposed to heal and. Make you feel better and clean out your colon. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Sedona, Arizona in April. Sedona, Arizona. Is it in Arizona? Yeah. That's oh, wrong. You scared me. All right. Sedona, Arizona. And uh, they have like healing things there. What is it called again? The uh, holistic. The uh, vortexes. Oh, the vortex. I saw a show on that. It was hysterical. The vortex. And you're supposed to like 
I don't know, like climb up some of these cliffs and and stand where the vortex is. Yeah, and supposedly and then some vortex like professional will tell you where to move and go uh, and take and, your money. And what is that supposed to do? I don't know. It's supposed to put you in the place where the earth. Uh, some magnetic property of the earth is supposed to help you out. You gotta stand in an exact spot. Dude, and the only whole these pros town know. is all about the vortex. Yeah, the vortex. Sedona is one of the most beautiful places you could go in all of America with the red rocks and stuff. But, yeah. But they're all uh, advertising the vortex. Yeah. And these professionals, these vortex pros, know where all these vortexes are. So you pay them good money and they tell you where to stand and run around in circles and. It's really odd. I saw a show on it, and they just all look like lunatics. I think it was on that Penn and Teller uh, bullshit show. The best is the locals. Showtime. I go, all right, come on, man, tell me the truth. What's up with the vortex? Is like, don't waste your money. Of course not. All, all us uh, locals know it's a joke, but uh, you know, brings they a lot laugh. of tourists. Oh, they, they laugh. laugh at the people up on these plateaus, and and they're jumping and running around and doing things on the vortex. What they should do is walk you up to the, the end of the cliff and then take your money and put their foot in your spine and watch you plunge <laughs> to your stupid death. <laughs> and then all you hear as you're dying is them laughing and waving your cash at them. <laughs> so, Maybe I made up. <laughs> and Freak Show wants to know, uh, what does it cost for a, the mud cave? Wow. Was it expensive? No. Not really, because, you know, these hippies don't have much money. I think they make it up in volume. Cause, and it's it's in the same area that these big hot springs are in. And they've made pools, like huge community-sized swimming pools, out of these hot springs. Yeah, They're that, fed with the hot springs. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, I saw. But I mean built-in built in pools that they make that are the size of Olympic-sized you know, swimming oh. pools that are filled on a daily basis with this uh, water, this, this hot spring water. And it's supposed to be... You know, it's supposed to help you. And I looked at the pool, and it's brown. It's because it's water coming from the ground. So it's brown, and it stinks like sulfur. No. I'll go to a nice hotel. They have heated swimming pools, <laughs> and I will swim in there. I want to smell chlorine when I swim, not sulfur and hippie feet. <laughs> hey, hippie. Oh, those goddamn Them hippies. hippies. Goddamn hippie. Uh, Norton, no, you've never done anything like that? Oh, come on, man. I'm, I'm a hotel guy. The same. I don't like any outdoor crap ever. That's me. I don't like it. And somehow I always get pushed into these things. You remember the famous hiking trip? Um, Upstate New York. Yeah. In the Catskills. Oh, didn't you get lost or something? Yep. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Me and my girlfriend uh, go hiking. On a, little, uh, now, on a little day hike, right? On a day hike <laughs> to go up to the top of this mountain and then back down the mountain. We hike all the way up. It just takes hours to hike up this. And it's, you know, it's up. It's uphill the whole way. I'm just looking forward to down because at least your pal gravity can work with you. Uh, we, we go up this mountain, have a little lunch, and uh, go back down. And uh, my girlfriend goes, oh, I know another way down. Like, uh -oh. And now she's pointing to a trail on the other side of the the mountain, and I'm thinking in my head, this this cannot be the way down. I go, I go, this is not the way down. She goes, no, I remember taking this when I was a kid. It's uh, it's another way down. All right, let's go. We go. It wasn't another way down. It was another way to some faraway land that I could not even fathom more mountains climb i noticed when we started climbing up again we were going down and then all of a sudden the trail starts going up again i go wait we're going up a mountain again um and then she was like uh oh there's a problem <laughs> now now coming down the mountain in the new trail that we had gone down yeah there were some places that you can't get back up i'm talking we were rock climbing like climbing down sheer rock walls that you can't climb back up without mountain climbing equipment so now we can't turn around and go the way we came uh. because you'd have to climb up these sheer rock walls. So we continued, just kept going, kept going, 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 going. The sun's going down. Like, oh, brother. And it's, it's <laughs> fall upstate. It's going to get cold. Then the rain starts. It starts raining. We had brought, we had done, I mean, look at a manual of what not to do when you're hiking. We did it all. We did it all. Had no food. No water, no appropriate clothing for, for the cold. Uh, kept just walking. I figured this trail's got to end up somewhere. 
So we just kept walking. It got too dark now to walk because, like I said, it's not just a trail. You're climbing up and down mountains. Uh. Saw a sign that said lean-to, and it was this way like another mile. So we had to hike another mile. It's dark. Uh, get uh, On the way to the lean-to, before it got completely dark, uh, I'm walking, and um, I see a black bear walking in front of me, and I'm like, oh, this is all I need. I'm wow. going to get eaten by a goddamn bear upstate, lost in the woods. Shock Jock <laughs> shock, shock gets eaten by a black eaten bear. Eaten by bear, and you know everyone that hates Phil us would, laugh, would just laugh. And uh, the black bear just moseyed along his way, but now I'm just it's in my head now that there are bears oh roaming around God. here. We get to the lean-to. What is a lean-to? It's this thing that I guess hunters uh, use a sometimes. Little, yeah, a little, little shelter thing. It's a shelter. It's not made out of sticks. It's made out of wood, and it's got a shingle roof on it, but the whole front is open, and people usually light fires if they have m- matches <laughs> and dry wood. Uh, they would light a fire in front and keep toasty or, warm all night. Or roll out their sleeping bag right. for the night. My girlfriend had her Keep dry coat. just in case it, gets, it starts raining during the night. Right. i got to ask you, why didn't you just ask Steve for directions when he walked in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> With his sweet honey-covered face. <laughs> you went the wrong way down the mountain. I told you to go the other way. <laughs> yeah. He has no idea. He's walking in the street. He has no clue. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. What? Nothing. You bear of a man. Did you secretly like nod your head toward the lean to to show Ant how to get there? <sighs> I really hate this part. Yeah. Why? It's like walking. You know why? Because it's I, I have no idea what you guys are talking about exactly. in the other room, and it's like walking into a hail of gunfire. Like, and you have no idea. Hello. Like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. We'd play that clip if we had our instant yeah. replay. Yeah. So we got the lean to. Um, couldn't light a fire because there was nothing there. We had no matches. Uh, try. Tried in vain with fro- like really cold, wet hands that weren't functioning anymore. Like you couldn't, I couldn't hold stuff. You know when your hands get so cold and wet that you can't move your fingers. So there I am trying to like get a piece of damp newspaper I found in the lean-to and like two rocks. <laughs> no way! Like I'm trying. It's just that desperation right before you die of exposure. You know, they find you with those dopey rocks in your frozen hands and some little wet piece of newspaper. It just was not working. And uh, we figured, you know, the only thing we can do is really just go to sleep. So we got a. Uh, she had a, a very light. Oh, that's good. S- spring that's jacket. The, that's how they're gonna find you. Exactly. In the that's it. That's you how they find you. Don't go to sleep. No, you try to try to keep moving, but no. Screw Go to sleep. So they find Screw you, like, you know, holding each other frozen. That's it. <laughs> so so we lay down in the lean-to, and, and we're trying to, like, stay both of us covered with her little lil spring jacket. And that was all we had, you know? And and it was the coldest, longest night I've ever spent in my life. And then knowing that when you wake up, you're still lost in the middle of the woods. So we, we got up uh, right when the sun came up, and it was cold and pouring rain. Ah. Uh, yeah. And we had to walk another, I, I don't know, I don't even know what it was. It was miles. How'd you figure out, did you go, you couldn't go backwards at this point? Nope. Just kept walking down one trail, knowing it would pop out somewhere. And it came out on a road uh, that was just deserted. And we ended up finding a park. Um, yeah, some sort of park where there was a bathroom with running water. Because we had no water either. And just spent time with my head under the faucet just drinking and then we found um, like a, a park ranger type station, and that person drove us back to our car where we started. And when we pulled up there, there's state police and everybody hanging out. And we get out of the car. Hi, we're stupid city people. Hi, <laughs> like oh, are you okay? They got blankets on us and stuff. And I was walking. I was crippled. My legs, I, dude, I could not walk. And I'm trying to make it like nothing's wrong. Like ah, no problem. I dealt with it fine, and I'm walking like a newborn fawn. <laughs> like, I'm, like a, you ever you ever take one of those hour long dumps and your legs go numb yeah. and you stand up and try to walk out of the bathroom? That's how I was. Yeah, you get the butt hickey. Just awful. I needed some of those chrome <laughs> cripple people crutches. <laughs> the way I was walking, horrible. And they're offering us, you know, granola bars and fruit. Are you okay? Like, yeah, no problem. Hi, we're stupid city people. Hi, we're stupid city people that should be dead right now. I saw a bear. I saw a big fluffy bear in the woods. 
Oh. Did you take a dump in the woods at all in the rain? No, no. Oh. There was no dumping. There was just it was just this tunnel vision. Keep walking. Don't even for a second think about the situation you're in. And just keep walking. Why all the uh, police and stuff and, and rangers? We, uh, the family started. My girlfriend's calling? mother had reported us missing. Oh yeah. wow! And we were we were missing overnight. So it wow, was, it was just the worst situation. And all this happened just in Central Park, huh? Yeah, it was very <laughs> hard, and I didn't even know Central Park West was like. We, at one point, we were so close to it. Central Park. <laughs> we were in the middle of the. The forest, upstate New York. That's all. Bear, awesome. scary, man. That's like, that's oh, like for real. This is real. That was scary as hell. He just trotted along, you know, didn't even give me a look. But to know that there are bears there, I was like, oh, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. Lucky it didn't have a cub. You ever hear those stories of bears that have cubs and someone stumbles on them? Yeah, just uh, stumble on them. Tough to explain I, what's going on. Like, no, 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 we're just lost. I was able to see him from a distance because he had a flaming hat on. <laughs> And uh, and the music and the music. Do, 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 whatever that music is. <laughs> it's Martini Bear. It's Martini Bear. Cozy face on that bear. It was so cozy. I just wanted to pet it. It had a perfectly manicured beard. Little soul patch. Blonde head of yeah, white hair. Yeah, little blonde head. It was a, it's, it's the strangest thing. A black bear with a blonde head. That's classic. <laughs> Absolutely classic. Yeah, and it was drinking heavily, <laughs> too. Could barely walk. Foundry music. Dot, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching porno and. Rob, bitch, rock, rock, bitch, bitch, rock.